driving Metropolis world class in both its global visibility and local accomplishments. It's ethnically rich, economically diverse, host to films and festivals, home to respected schools and a magnet to corporations, both large and small. All these things have put Toronto in the limelight, but there is an important segment still waiting for its time to shine, and that's Toronto's vibrant startup technology community. Those familiar with the community will tell you that Toronto's filled with some of the most tech-savvy minds in the business. And Canadians love the internet. We love the internet, but uh, when we are looking at the retail category, we love the retail category as well. Uh, we're consuming 3.1 billion pages viewed per month, uh, 338 million total visits in the month. I do spend a fair bit of my time actually working with Toronto-based corporations and entrepreneurs as well. As far as the city is concerned, I think Toronto itself has some major infrastructure challenges, but I really truly believe that the uh, politicians now are looking into it and hopefully they'll be able to resolve that over the next few years. Uh, even better, Cisco Systems uh, recently announced uh, that they're going to create an innovation hub here in Toronto. And I think that's uh, a good thing simply because there's so many good resources, I believe, in the Toronto area itself, particularly with the universities graduating some top uh, students, uh, George Brown College and some of the others as well. Uh, I believe that there's uh, a lot of room for growth. At this rapid pace, Toronto may be on its way to comparing with tech communities in New York City or Tel Aviv. However, there are some issues that are stopping Toronto from excelling, and we're going to take a deeper look into some of Toronto's emerging companies to find out what's in store for its tech startup community. DMAC Media is an award-winning, full-service e-commerce agency based out of Toronto. It's one of Canada's largest e-commerce development firms, staffed with strategists, designers, and developers. Their goal is to help merchants excel within their e-commerce businesses. Here's what Matt Bertulli, CEO of DMAC, had to say about Toronto's e-commerce market. DMAC Media is a, a team of strategists, designers, and developers that, I guess, help merchants build and grow e-commerce businesses or digital commerce businesses. Um, I guess that that's sort of like the one-liner, but take it down a step. We're, what we do is a combination of both services and software and technology that we've developed in-house here um, over the last five years. So. I guess in, in Toronto, there's just not a lot of us kicking around. Um, you know, Shopify just moved in, which has been great for the, I guess, the ecosystem locally. But for the last four or five years, it's kind of been us and, and maybe you know, one or two other companies that really focus on, on e-commerce as a vertical. Um, so it, it's been both great and, and bad by not having any company. You know, finding and acquiring talent seems to be a big problem for us, mostly because there's just not a lot of experienced people in, in e-commerce in Canada. Um, my counterpart, our, our business counterparts in the States, there's lots and lots because they've been at it and they're so much further ahead than us. Um, and then I think, you know, number three is, is maybe just, um, you know, broader, like we're just, we're a conservative country and therefore maybe a bit conservative as a business. So learning to think a bit more aggressive in, in how we approach both you know, Canada as a market, and also like just crossing the border and going into the States. So I think those three things are probably our three like top challenges. DMAC Media is responsible for much of the technology that powers e-commerce operations at Ardeen, Boathouse and Macaj, just to name a few. So we um, are a huge part of the Toronto um, community here, specifically with the e-commerce community. Um, DMAC Media uh, co-hosts a e-commerce meetup uh, every month at the Mars Heritage Building. Uh, we have some fantastic present uh, presentations from uh, Shopify, Canada Post, and MasterCard. And we've seen our membership just skyrocket. We are over 400 members now. Um, so our meetup is once a month, we pick a topic under the umbrella of e-commerce um, and we basically have an open table discussion just to increase the, the knowledge and education of everyone in the room and help network. And so I think there's a real need and a real hunger for this education um, from Toronto and just really showcasing like who's in this community and, and what we have to offer, not only our city and Canada, but on an international level as well. So Toronto and Canada, on the e-commerce level um, is farther behind than some of the other countries in the world when it comes to e-commerce, but I think we have a lot to bring 
and a lot of changing technology and uh, there's definitely going to be a big shift. Um, Shopify is an excellent example of that, a, a fantastic Canadian startup success story. They just recently raised $100 million in uh, C-level funding, I believe. And uh, yeah, they're starting to change the way you know, retailers think about e-commerce, offering a fantastic e-commerce platform to do so easily and quickly. Um, to get set up on the web and, and sell their products worldwide. And that's a fantastic success story of, of Canada and how we're helping to shape the, the tech industry on an international level. And something that we've seen specifically in the Toronto um, scene is some really great organizations coming together to help increase more females in the tech industry as well. Um, so organizations like Ladies Learning Code, Camp Tech, Hacker U, all of these organizations work together to essentially increase the education for female specifically, that's how Ladies Learning Code started. Um, and I've even taken part of uh, their workshops as well, um, you know, learning HTML, CSS, uh, Ruby, uh, Photoshop, and really helping to not only increase my knowledge of, of technology in general and, and the technology that's out there to be learned, but um, also just really helping to network within the industry and meeting other women who are in the same situation and finding out who they are. Um, so we have this really great community in Toronto that's really helping to increase um, the amount of women in tech and sort of showcasing the opportunities that are available to women and uh, you know what are some possible career choices for younger girls um, who haven't maybe gone through high school or university yet to sort of really help show them that there are tons of opportunities for both men and female um, in the tech world and, and really helping to, to push that barrier. Graham Leckie, Vice President of DMAC, gives some insight on how DMAC operates. This reinforces how companies in Toronto are beginning to operate the same way as other established companies in the world. So specifically in the world of e-commerce, Canada is behind. If you look at the US, if you look at Australia, there are leaps and bounds ahead of us in terms of not only the amount of companies, but the quality of companies that are out there. They really know what they're doing and they focus their efforts not only on development, anybody can write code. It, you can ship it to India to write code. What you really need to give to your customers is additional value, whether that be from education, whether that be from strategy or consulting. You can, anybody can slap a website up. It's really figuring out and working with those potential merchants, those potential customers, where they can actually build their business. Not only building your own e-commerce business, um, doing development, but actually building their business, driving revenue, driving sales, as opposed to just slapping a site up and walking away from it. So it's really fostering those longer term relationships is where you can see companies start to accelerate and we've really tried to position ourselves as a thought leader within the market because that then is going to drive the values to the customers and not only we barely do any outbound marketing. Everything's inbound. It's we've got a great section shop talk on our website. That's all blog posts. It's written by people within the company, and that's where we see our inbound leads coming from. Is because people are looking, hey, how do I do this in Magento? What do I do for e-commerce strategy? What should I do for the holidays? You're going to drive a lot of traffic. Not only that, which will help you succeed, but it also give you that positioning within the market. Not only as somebody who can write code, but somebody who can also deliver some value for you. Jim Cover, DMAX Customer Success Manager, takes us even further into the importance of customer relations and his thoughts on Canada in comparison to other countries involved in startups. Well, I like that we're held in at least the same regard as places like Silicon Valley, even though we'll never be them, but at least that we're in the same conversation as that sort of area of the world. So Toronto is becoming known as a tech startup um, ecosystem and a, a part of the community and the global community at that. Um, and it's growing all the time with different types of companies popping up all over the place um, in all sorts of t types of tech industries as well. There's really a home for everybody in Toronto. From a Canadian consumer perspective, e-commerce has been so big in you know, the U.S. and overseas for such a long time that I think consumers are now trained to go to the Amazons and the Zappos when they first initially start their online shopping process. Uh, but as e-commerce is growing in Canada, it still is behind those countries. Uh, but I feel like Canadians are more, they're starting to feel more localized when they're doing their searches, whether they're using Google, Bing, any of the search networks. They're looking for places that they can buy car seats, you know, in Burlington, Ontario, as opposed to just automatically thinking that we have to go online to Babies R Us and then having it shipped from across the border. So I think Canadians are now looking in that direction and Canadian companies are doing a good job of actually optimizing their websites and forming their strategies to be more local 
even if it's not from Canada coast to coast, if it's in their regions that they service, whether they have stores in that area, um, if they're able to service those areas from their retail stores, um, I definitely think there is a growing um, acceptance by Canadian consumers to actually buy more online in Canada. Even though they're still going to buy from places in the U.S., they're starting to realize that the services being offered here in Canada are more readily available to them. Canada Post is one good example of it. You see a lot of their marketing right now is based on how they're starting to provide better services for shopping online uh, and lowering those shipping costs. And in terms of variety, absolutely, because before there was such a limited selection available maybe online here in Canada. So you would go into the States, and, and the trends are the same between offline and online, where a lot of people do cross the border during the holiday seasons to go you know, shop in Buffalo if you're in New York, whereas now, um, a lot of Canadian companies and their suppliers are opening up a lot more products that they're able to look and find here. So even if you don't necessarily buy locally here in Ontario, maybe there's a provider in Manitoba that offers those to you as well for the same shipping costs after a certain threshold as they would if you were to cross the border or um, you know just buy it online there and then pay for those duties. Uh, you're nullifying that by you know expanding your horizon. You may have heard of a little company called Canada Post. Well, believe it or not, it also used to be a startup company, which has now turned into Canada's leading provider of electronic commerce and customer communication solutions. Canada Post is playing a pivotal role in helping e-commerce grow in the Canadian economy. It even opened a department inside its offices focusing directly on tech startups. It reaches more than 15.3 million addresses worldwide with convenient pickup and return options for online shoppers. We traveled to their main distribution center in Mississauga, Ontario to take a look at how they operate and caught up with public relations personnel, Carly Smith. So Canada Post itself, I think, is looked upon by some people as this old organization that is just letter mail. Um, but in fact, Canada Post is a 150-year-old startup itself. Uh, we understand what startups are going through. Uh, we see the trends that are coming out of places like the US and, and Europe. Um, and we're working as a team with those startups uh, to create the best solutions. So, for example, um, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to come in and talk to an expert uh, on our team. And we'll let you know everything for, that you need to know about direct mail, uh, direct marketing, how to do that the most cost-efficient way possible. Um, you know, instead of blanketing a whole neighborhood with flyers, how to find those customers in that neighborhood that are doing the online shopping, um, you know, that live at certain addresses that we just know um, are going to be a good customer. So it may cost a little bit more, but your return is going to be so high once you actually um, once you actually get those right customers. And then in terms of shipping, shipping is expensive and I think it's up to the retailer to find out um, that perfect balance of do I offer free shipping or do I offer um, an amount that they have to purchase in order to get free shipping, to qualify for free shipping. It's up to the retailer to find that perfect balance with their own customers, mm -hmm. um, but we can help with that. There's lots of research out there that shows, um, you know, offering free shipping uh, helps the customer purchase a certain amount, or um, there's lots of ideas that, that we have that we can share. And ultimately, Canada Post offers the most convenience for, for Canadian online shoppers. You know, we reach all addresses in Canada. Um, we have the most convenient method of if you're not home, you can go around the corner and pick up your parcel at an, at an outlet. Um, so I think that knowing consumers and, and how they like to receive these products um, can make you a really successful startup. This will read all six possible sides in order to look for the barcode. It finds the barcode, it sends it on its way, and it's going to go through the system there and get sorted to one of those runouts. So even, even packets that don't have a proper barcode are going to get sorted because of this technology here. This is a, a big advance for us. Now we've made a lot of investments in technology so that we can, you know, get a parcel in the door and out of the door as fast as possible. Um, we we want to change as the mail changes. So we've seen a decline in letter mail uh, by a billion pieces from 2006 until now. Uh, and in turn, we've seen an, a rise in e-commerce. So people are shipping absolutely everything and, and online shopping 
um, is where it's at. So we want to adapt with, with that change in the mail system. Uh, so we've invested in technology. Um, you know, over the last, last year, we had uh, two days where we hit a million parcels delivered per day. Uh, this year, we're projecting probably seven days uh, that will hit a million parcels delivered. So it just shows the rise in e-commerce in, in Canada Post and in Canada. Uh, we are seeing um, an increase over year in t by 20%, so double-digit increase in, in online shopping and in turn in e-commerce and in parcels going through our system. As far as uh, dealing with uh, internationally, I think one of the main uh, obstacles that I run into, or ran into actually, was the high cost of uh, internet-based services and many of the new subscription fee models that some companies are coming out with, particularly software-based companies. And I think it puts a strain on your cash flow and also makes us a lot less competitive when you hear internet prices are actually lower in other countries, as well as cell phone service. So I think that we have to really do something in Toronto to sort of get the telecommunications and cable companies um, to uh, understand that so that we can become much more competitive. And those are the things that really need to change most. Get better infrastructure and reduce our telecommunications or our communication costs in general. And if we can do that, well, we'll be winners. <laughs>